what I do is I usually have a patient lay down. I do confirm what side it is. I always say, I know this is a stupid question, but please tell me what we're doing for you. Um, mainly because I don't, I, there have been occasional incidents when people kind of come in, they have seven body parts that are bothering them, and then they say, um, and then we talk about both sides in there, and you're injecting my knee, and you have to, oh, crap. Um, I don't always remember. So I always make them double check, but I don't mark the leg or anything like we do when we have surgery. Uh, let's see. Oh, a really tiny syringe. Oh, you're lucky. Okay. So if I'm going to do this, usually what I do before the room, I mean, if we're going to be very complete, what I do is I have an 18-gauge needle outside the room. Um, I talk to the athletic trainers while I'm doing that. I throw the wrong things in the wrong trash usually, and I get yelled at. Um, Accurate so far? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is horse tranquilizer. Okay, good. Um, so, I mean, this is xylocaine. I usually draw up as little as possible. So um, if I'm going to inject a knee, I usually use about two cc's of that. And then this is Depomedrol, which is 40 milligrams. It comes in 40 or 80 milligrams. And then you usually get about two cc. So I inject this in and then all of it goes in and then all of it comes back out. If you do this and then get distracted and then it sits in the room for a while, just shake it again because it will kind of condense in. Um, and then I switch to a smaller needle. So I usually use a 22 gauge for injection. The landmarks that I'm going to use, and I'm not really gonna inject you. Okay. The landmarks I'm gonna use is this is top of the patella right here, okay? So, and then this is lateral border of the patella. Um, pick your legs up and then put them there. Good. And then I can get them to totally relax by sitting on a pillow or a towel. And then if you look closely, when I push the kneecap over, there, her kneecap goes up to here. That means I have all this space up here, about two finger breaths above the kneecap, that I'm going to be able to safely do the injection. So when I'm doing the knee, knee injection, I don't use betadine. It hasn't been shown to be any better. But I do a couple things, and I tell the patient what I'm doing. I say, I'm going to clean your skin with alcohol. I'm going to let the alcohol dry. We do that for two reasons. First, if you ever think about getting alcohol in, an, in a cut, it hurts like crazy, right? Well, it doesn't feel any better if you wipe it down and then shove a needle through it. It hurts just as much. That's why your kids hate getting shots, because um, that's exactly what they do. Think about it. You, get, you bring your kid in, they wipe it, they say, this one's going to hurt. Yeah, it is, because you've got wet alcohol going into the wound. So I let it dry. It also kills more bacteria if it's dry. And then I take um, either ethyl chloride or this stuff, um, which is mist spray, ethyl chloride, but it either comes in like the thing that you can direct from 10 feet away, or this one, which is a broader spray. And then I keep where, wherever my landmark is, I just want to spray right there. And you keep it about six inches away until it looks cold and frosty, OK? And then I'm, not, I'm literally not going to inject you, I think. Um, and then I just poke right in. And what you usually feel is two things. You feel skin, and then you'll feel it go through the capsule. And that's a legitimate poke. If they're going to shriek, it's going to be at the capsule because the capsule, especially in an inflamed knee, is going to hurt a little bit.